Hello, this is Jared French. Today's prompt is on the problem of scale, dealing with what factors go into the government's ability to operate and meet the needs of the population. And so as we approach this, let's define some terms. Uh, Dr. Don Livingston and the lecturers for our course talked about the four political theories that were offering at the founding on how you right-size a nation and get the right scale of government to that nation. If we can summarize three views, that are very similar, but yet didn't, op didn't work together enough, were Republic views. You had those who prescribed to views from Plato and Aristotle. You have Athusius and then Hume. And so these three views share that, 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 that government is a tool to aid something already naturally within humans, our tendency to work together. And so the government is really viewed as a trellis for the vine to grow into. And so you have a Republic of sovereign states where the Republic, these, these states working together, would, would work together for defense of the whole, but then the rest of the stuff be done at the state level, day-to-day -day stuff. The other view, number four, is from the 17th century philosopher Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes views the government as a necessary to combat anarchy. And so there you want a big government. As opposed to the other ones, we're kind of debating, okay, what's the right size? It's small. Here's big. And, and this has kind of come out on top. Um, there's a lot more to get into that, but here's some of the problem. That it's really problems of scale. We uh, point out two of them here. Right? We have a political philosophy of this country that's ill-defined. And so without that definition, now certainly there was those who put their stakes in the ground, but without that definition, you can just hijack the lack of clarity without having to define the direction and build consensus to move everyone there. You just utilize the, the, the lack of definition. And since the Hobbesian view uh, has been left unchecked, we, I, I believe, secondly, we are moving to a territory that we get less and less freedom, we're getting less things done, and we're in more dangerous territory. To illustrate this, I come at it from a Baptist history perspective. But starting, first of all, right, we have a federal government that's not getting things done. As far as our federal representative body is a standstill, so divided, then our conversation on our executive election is not about who will be president, the office of president, but more about who they will appoint to the Supreme Court. More and more, we're getting to the point where we're getting a tri tribunal of nine non-elected appointees who are deciding our future. Danger! All right, now, now, now let me add the level of danger from the Baptist history perspective. Um, the, there's the Jefferson Danbury Baptist Association letters, uh, and there's a draft in there. It is letters, not letter, though that's where the tension goes, just Jefferson's side. So this is a private exchange between the sitting president, Thomas Jefferson, and the Danbury Baptist Association. Private... From 1801 to 1802, this letter exchange. And it has been used by the Supreme Court from, from 1878 to 2005, at least, uh, to help interpret the, the First Amendment that was written in 1789. Now, you catch that? Letters, private letters from 1801, 1802, to help understand a public 1789 legal statement? Wouldn't it be much better to go to Jefferson's 1770s Virginia legislation bills, number 82 through 86? Wouldn't it be better to go to the 1780s through 90 state constitutions, the ordinances for new territories? There you'd find a nuance. You'd see definitely religious liberty being, being, being more and more of a, of a stance, but also a promotion of religion. You'd have state-level funding for religion. You, religious people in the areas would direct funds. Uh, we, we directed funds because they're seeing doing good. Not Our, our federal money, does, or our, our, our money is not going just to secular need, uh, agency. So this is uh, illustrating a fact that Ian Barton points out, a, a fellow at Yale Law School, writing in 2009. Right? Historical arguments are nuanced, have complexity, and have depth. I hopefully kind of illustrated some of that with uh, pointing out where they could have gone in the Supreme Court. But the court does not have time for that. Uh, Constitution principles are often from the simplest historical research. And, and then that ends up making the Constitution principle. So danger, right? We have 320 million people in this country looking to an entity of nine non-elected officials who are finite. And that's fine. Our founders acknowledge that. That's why there's a division, uh, a delegation of powers. But they also have a track record of poor historical judgments, judging history. And then our elected officials can't, can't seem to get things done. And so we certainly have a problem of size and scale for our country. And so we need to be having this conversation, not just in terms of big versus small government, but size and scale. I look forward to hearing what you have come up with and insights and discussing with you.